I think it's, it's certainly very important in my life to have a, a passionate interest that has nothing to do with technology. For me, one of the activities that has really been primary in my life has been uh, choral singing. Photonics is not an industry that can potentially employ millions and millions of people the way the automotive industry employs millions and millions of people. It's a very agile technology. I wrote my first proposal to the European Commission in 2001 with this idea of creating a network among companies, particularly small companies in Europe working in this field who had seen their major market area, which was optical fiber communications, reduced to zero. Hey, Tom. Hey, Benno. How are you? Good to Great. see you. You know, this yeah. is where it all started. This we were right up started. there on the fourth floor. You can see oh, the window. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I would arrive on bike every day, and I got to go into the garage. So oh, nobody with the bike in the garage. Yeah, that's I didn't have to worry about somebody taking my bike while I was at work. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, that's a long time ago, uh, 20 years ago. Did a lot of things change here? In, it's amazing, in the you know, this looks just the way it did when I, when I retired. Hey, how, how are you? I have a surprise for you. I have a surprise for you. Hey, Martin, Tom. je t'embrasse. Hello, Tom. How are you? <laughs> Here we are, sitting, sitting, standing in the front of the of the scene of our great crime at, at the Espace Amelin. How do you feel uh, being again in our formal uh, office? Oh, it makes me feel much younger. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yes, as if, uh, as if I never left. You are making a film about uh, the, the, about the 20th anniversary of Epic, wow. yeah. oh. and, and how we managed to survive. You, you played an important role in this. It was for me the most, uh, the richest and the most interesting experience in my life, in business life, you know. All right. Okay. okay. Uh, well, Martin, we would like yeah. to we would like to thank you for your contribution, and really good to see thank you again. You and uh, my pleasure. Yes, we we wish you all the best. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, great to see you again, and I hope we can see each other again soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, very good. Bye. So, how many people were you well, when you were? So we were only two, and because we were a small office, they moved us around quite a bit. Oh, okay. So we spent two, five or six years here, but we were also out on the, they have a garden in the back. We were in the garden for three or four years. That was okay. really quite pleasant. Okay. Do you have uh, pictures of that time? Well, you, why don't you come to my place? Come on, That's and we'll idea. go, yeah, and I'll yeah. show you. Okay, yeah. Paris is a city in which it's getting easier and easier to bicycle without having to worry about serious injury. In my trip from our apartment near Palais Royal to the Espace Amelin, I get to go along the banks of the sun, on the pathway in the trees. Was wondering for me how, how, how an American would start uh, in Europe, in, in France, in Paris, Epic. Could, could you tell us something about how it all started? I came to Europe in, for the first time in the 1970s. And I worked for several years for a company called, which is now called Talus, uh, on optoelectronic components. Uh, for fiber optic communications. And it was at Talos, in fact, uh, I, I, one of the high points of my 
uh, career was the invention of indium gallium arsenide all right. and the indium gallium arsenide photodiode. That's mm -hmm. where it all started. But I went back to the United States to go to work for Bell Laboratories for 20 years, starting in 1980. Uh, but I'd already made very good friends in uh, Europe, both professional and personal. And these friendships only got stronger through the absence of, of not being here. So my wife and I actually concocted a plan to move back to Europe, which we did uh, just before the turn of the century. And I, the, this was made possible because of a job I was able to get at Corning at the time, who had mm -hmm. developed suddenly an interest in uh, optoelectronics, whereas previously they were, mo they were involved in making optical fibers only. They mm -hmm. decided to move into ap to active components. And I worked for Corning for four years before, uh, Corning, before the, the, the great... Uh, uh, photonics disaster struck Europe in 2002, so we were committed to stay, and so I had to invent a, a new career. Okay. Uh, and Epic was part of that idea from the very beginning. So how how did you get to the name? Oh, I'm good at names. Epic came to me. I said I would imagine within 24 hours of the time that I learned I was going to have to start a new new job. I'm thinking, well, it has to have European in it, and it has to have photonics in it, because at the time, photonics was an unknown word in, exactly. in scientific lexicon, or at least an engineering lexicon. And so certainly one idea was to introduce uh, the European Commission, whom I saw as a natural partner in this development. So how did and that, that go? You, you went to Brussels and you had some... Uh... Absolutely. The European Commission who were in a position to help align this project with an already existing and very successful European program called Optimist. And this introduced me to some, to some partners for life. One of them is Peter Van Dahl, who uh -huh. te teaches at the University of Ghent, and Paul Lagasse. And Paul Lagasse was a, was a, was a key uh, figure uh, in in, Euro in European photonics, and he was a great help in very gently but firmly guiding the direction of EPIC in these first, first years. How difficult was it to, to introduce the word photonics to the European Commission? This was funny. We did the simplest thing you could imagine, is that we did a word search for the word photonics. And that's how we know it doesn't appear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing of the word. This idea of photons and electrons working together was just not in the intellectual lexicon of the European Commission at the time. When EPIC was formed in 2003, my first charge from the board of directors was uh, to go to the European Commission and ask for a photonics technology program, a uh, platform. Uh, I didn't realize it at the time, but for several of the members of the board of directors, this was a test. If, if I was successful at this, then they would continue working with us. But they didn't tell me that. So we got Photonics introduced in Brussels, and then how did Photonics 21 match into that? EPIC was the organization that proposed the idea of Photonics 21 oh. to the Commission. The idea of Photonics 21 was to create a network among between uh, researchers and EPIC took its, what it, its existing uh, operations of various technology areas, biomedical, optical telecommunications, lasers for manufacturing, and we moved, we created in, for the European Commission an organization with these same uh, working groups. Okay. So the original working and LED lighting, we, all of this went into Photonics 21 as if we took something out of the heart of EPIC and moved it to the European Commission and we said, we'll go do other things. We yes. won't compete with you. It was to get money on the table that was targeted for supporting photonics technologies because mm -hmm. the previous model was that there was money on the table 
for supporting integrated circuit development. I joined EPIC with Avantis in 2014 mm. uh, when I met Carlos at the first time. Mm. You were already uh, st a step, a step mm. back at that time. And I was impressed with the meetings that were organized, mm. um, uh, having close contacts with mm. the other CEOs mm. and, and meetings with a lot of uh, app on the application mm. basis with end users as well. Uh, very focused meetings, you know, 50, 60 people in a room. Mm and uh, being very productive. EPIC was divided in the beginning into workshop, or in, into working groups. There was a working group for optical communications, a working group for LED lighting, a group for laser manufacturing, laser assisted manufacturing, one in biomaterials and bio uh, uh, photonics, for example. And in the in the beginning, we organized systematically a workshop in each of these areas. I was working with Martine, who, uh, and Marti. <laughs> Martine was my, absolutely my right-hand person, I have to say, and without her, we would never have succeeded in getting through this initial, uh, uh, very time-consuming and uh, uncertain phase of operations. So, so tell me, uh, all these events from this time, do do you have pictures? There are probably no, no digital pictures, but do you have like oh, physical pictures? From, everything from is that here. Time? Everything is here in the head. Yeah. But you know, for, for my good friends that come, I keep I always keep an album. Oh, here, really? In my oh, bookcase nice. here. Yeah. And ah, oh, a lot of memories here. This is. What's that picture here? So this is uh, one of the first. Uh, boards of director meeting for EPIC uh, in, that was held in Strasbourg, if I, if I recognize the background here. And over here is Bernd Schulte from oh, yeah. Extra. Yes, I know Bernd. This, yeah. is, this is Klaus Streubel from mm -hmm. uh, Osram. Uh, here's Jonathan Halls from Cambridge Display Technology. Uh, here's Terry, uh, Jean Thierry Audran from Sagem. So this was back in 2003, basically. Oh, this is, I'd say, this is later. This is the meeting at Strasbourg when Photonics 21 was introduced to the European community by, by Vivian Redding. Oh, okay. At Europe, in Photonics Europe. Nice, so this is all from the early days. This is a very interesting photograph here that I'd like to draw your attention to. For me, this was the uh, a great Where is this? triumph. This is in the Sol Ve, Ve Library of, in Brussels. And here we're looking at the signing of the Terms of Reference for Photonics 21. So these, this is... These are all the original members. Yeah. And Martine and I are up here in the galleries looking at this. And this was the effort, the result of two or three years of effort to bring Photonics 21 from, the, from an idea, a crackpot idea, to, to reality. You know, what, one thing that occurs to me that you're, you're almost never in these pictures. So wh why is that? Well, did you, you know, the, the point of Epic in the beginning was to put the members on the stage and so that the members would be the point of focus and not the association. Uh, and that Epic was created to improve the visibility and impact of its membership and rather than the Im visibility and impact of its uh, sec general secretary. Okay. So uh, most of the time I'm behind the camera taking yes. the pictures. You're taking the pictures, yeah. right. Okay. So when, when did Carlos start? Uh, it would have been, I think, around 2013. 2013? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, 2012, yeah. 2013. And, and, and you were the one hiring Carlos, basically, yes. then? Yes. Okay. Actually, I met Carlos at a, at a meeting in the, at the European Commission. Okay. He was, uh, he was representing SEMI, uh, which was a semiconductor equipment manufacturers association. And we had a short, an initial short discussion, and I'm listening to Carlos talk, and I said, this is the guy that we need to get uh, to run Epic. I was very concerned about my succession at Epic, mm -hmm. and I think more than anything else, I was concerned that Epic continued to grow. I remember in the early discussions, uh, now Carlos was very successful attracting a lot of new members. He was doing everything by himself. And we had to convince Carlos to hire extra people to 
to work with him, you know, basically on the, on the mm. technology part. Mm. Uh, so the first one we mm. hired was Jose. I was very pleased by that because I'd worked with Jose on a European project before I knew who he was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But at the time, I did not appreciate his media savvy approach to photonics, and I think that Jose was an, it was a very wise and productive addition to the to the Epic team. Exactly, and from there it, it grew uh, very quickly. Mm. So the team nowadays it's eleven people, and uh, we've been through some some changes in mm. the team. You know, making it more professional towards the future. The idea we tried to put forward was that Epic was a platform for these small companies to have real influence on controlling their own destinies. I have to say, I would, I I never had in, imagined in my five, and I had five year plans having 800 or 1,000 members of uh, com member companies in, in Epic as an organization. So we talked a lot about uh, the business and the organization, but uh, what about uh, uh, hobbies? So what, what kind of uh, hobbies do you have? For me, there, I think one of the activities that has really been um, primary in my life is how I met my wife. Uh, we just had our 50th wedding anniversary, so it was, a, it was a good meeting <laughs> and it's lasted for a long time has been uh, choral singing. Singing, and this started when I was in graduate school. Oh, okay. And uh, Rio and I participated in a concert of Mahler's Second mm -hmm. Symphony, which has significant choral participation. And for quite a number of years, we sang in the chorus of the orchestra in Paris, and Daniel Barenboim was our chef, uh, at and we made, you know, we traveled all over the world and we made recordings. <laughs> this experience was one of the reasons why we sought to, in the 1990s to come back to France and uh, because of the things we were able to identify with our lives that were really just such extraordinary experiences mm -hmm and understanding that it's not over. I think that uh, Epic has reached another stage in which it needs a revolutionary change in, the, in its directions and uh, organization and activities. Uh, and again, this will happen because there are good people running Epic. Mm -hmm. they're, have, they're listening to what the members are saying they're paying attention to developments. The 20th century was the century of electronics and the 21st century will be the century of photonics. I don't think that's an exaggeration. I think that's a good description of what's happening. And we're just in the start of the century, right? <laughs>